Hello, BookTube. We're back for my library tour of 2022, uh, where I'm giving myself a visual record uh, of all the books in my collection at the moment, and also giving you, I hope, a bunch of interesting books to look at. Uh, and we are starting here in the little book room, which is, as you can see, a bit of a shambles at the moment. It needs, it needs some tender love and care. Uh, the important things are there. The Roman sword is there. The bean is there, but uh, but it needs a lot more care than this. It's not. It's not. It needs to be in a little better shape than it is right now. Uh, but we don't stand on ceremonies on this channel, so we're just going to plow ahead with the next bookcase. I am on the floor, as if the snowstorm weren't bad enough. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, the bookcase that I'm dealing with here was custom made for me by a muscular young teenager, and it is uh, the shelves are not only tall but deep. Specifically because I was thinking I would stack things uh, in front of other things, and I did. So we're going to have to uh, dig out quite a bit to get at the row of books at the back. Uh, so we'll deal with the transwise stuff first, including uh, ephemera. There's ephemera here. There's a bookmark. <laughs> I don't know why this isn't in a book. Do, do we have a, any kind of writing on it? Well, we did once upon a time, but it's so faded that you can't make it out. Okay, this just needs to be in a book, that's all. Uh, and then... Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I don't know what this is doing here. Should I stop the video? I don't know what this is doing here. Uh, this is a little picture. This, this belongs somewhere else. This doesn't belong out and about. Uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, a young man and his beagle. Uh, a long, long time ago. Weird to see that next to this. That is just incredibly weird. Uh, I don't know what that's doing there. I, I will set it aside and find a better home for it. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's press on here. Uh, we have a big stack of these old Del Rey, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Carter of Mars books. These mass market paperbacks that I love so much. Uh, with the full wraparound cover art uh, that is just, in some cases, really, really lovely. Uh, I have two sets of these mass market paperbacks, plus, as you've seen already on this library tour, I have tons and tons of John Carter from ours. But I loved this set when it was coming out, uh, when it was in, on, you know, the spinner rack at the dry goods store. I just loved it. I thought it was uh, lovingly done. They, they, did, they gave it the, the big, huge treatment here, with then the titles beneath that. Uh, then we have Dune. <laughs> we have Frank Herbert's classic Dune in the uh, mass market paperback with this great cover, two small figures on a Dune skate. Uh, and then in a larger version of that same paperback. Uh, same artwork, just, just a slightly different size book, that's all. They both have bookmarks in them, which is insane. Can't read two of the same copy of the book at the same time. That, that, that's just silly. Uh, it's just a further indication that this, I mean, <laughs> it's just a further indication that this room needs work. Uh, then, as mentioned yesterday, we have the Viking Portable Shakespeare. This has uh, all of Hamlet, all of Macbeth, all of Romeo and Juliet, all of Julius Caesar, all of A Midsummer Night's Dream, all of As You Like It, all of The Tempest, passages from other plays, all of the sonnets and songs, and a keyword index that will help you to find things. That, uh, You're getting the full show here. Uh, sometimes Frida just needs to settle down. <laughs> We're all watching you, baby. Oh. <laughs> She's just attacking the bed. That's all. What are you doing? What are you doing over there? <laughs> Doesn't matter. None of you are paying attention to me anyway. Huh, you're just paying attention to this weird little dog on my bed. Decades after that beagle. Decades. Good Lord. That was a shock to the system. All right, well, let, let's move on here. Let's just move on. Uh, the next two, uh, the last things that are on the front of the books here are two more mass market paperbacks. These are Star Trek novels. Uh, the Price of the Phoenix and its sequel, The Fate of the Phoenix, uh, which are never going to get reprinted. And so I'm, I'm happy to, to grab them whenever I find them. They are sentimental favorites of mine when it comes to Star Trek fiction. I just dearly dearly love them <laughs> and I've, I've read all of the classic star trek the original series fiction i've read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books along those lines i still keep going back to this one it's a great uh, silly a nonsense but a great story about how a, 
a renegade scientist named Omni, O-M-N-E, uh, figures out a way to combine the food replicators, the food replicator technology in Star Trek with the transporter technology in Star Trek in order to somehow capture the soul of an individual and replicate it. So not an android double of a person, not even uh, an exact biological double that's somehow a homunculus, but rather the person, right down to the essence. Uh, and he does this with Captain Kirk. Uh, but he doesn't reveal it at first. At first he thinks, he doesn't reveal that he has preserved the original Kirk. Instead, he leads Spock and the female Romulan commander from the Enterprise incident to think that he has saved Kirk that Kirk was going to die, and the original Kirk did, but he saved by, uh, Kirk by making a completely accurate duplicate. It's only later in the novel that we realize that, that both Kirks are alive, and that the Romulan commander and Spock and both Kirks need to fight Omni. They need to stop this process from becoming common in the galaxy. Uh, just an amazing job. I just I, It's totally cheesy, but I love it. Uh, then the one transverse book on top of the books is this thing, which I the Foundation Trilogy in this Barnes & Noble leather bound with the, uh, the galactic end papers and the circuit board imagery that wraps all around. Uh, this, I knew that Barnes & Noble made this, but uh, I fell in love with it up in Vermont. I went up to Mark Richardson's house up in Vermont and at, at, I wanted to reread Foundation and uh, I asked him if he had copies and I, I think he had a few, but he immediately, his hand went out for this thing, his copy of this. Uh, and I thought, I'll just reread Foundation. It's been a long, long time. Uh, but then I read I read the whole thing and was just very much more impressed than I was originally. Very much more impressed. I loved it. Uh, and typical, typical and true to his nature, Mark automatically offered to give it to me. But I, I thought, better to, to leave it there and go to Barnes & Noble once I get back to Boston and buy a copy of my own. And I did. So I, I can't imagine a prettier copy of the original three foundation books so i wanted to have it uh, and then we have the audubon book of true nature stories uh this is edited by john terry's terry's with uh illustrations by walter ferguson just a, a battered old thing is this from the 50s 60s uh 1958 uh and it's it's got all of the just great spot illustrations full page illustrations of uh kind of latrons right there uh, of uh, stories from Audubon magazine just a, a delightful delightful anthology uh, then this next one what is this oh okay uh, this is from DeCapo Press I don't know if I got this from them or if I found this used uh, no I found this used last year this is uh, by John Ruskin this is the Stones of Venice uh, an abridgment a work of his that was very, very famous. Once upon a time, this was the book on Venice to have. Where did the bean go? Is she still there? <laughs> Baby, where are you? Oh, there she is. There she is. She's staring beadily at me across the room. <laughs> uh, then we have a cat, uh, an author that we've seen before, I think, in this room. Uh, this is H.V. Morton, who did a series of books of travel guides, sort of ruminative, historical, philosophical travel guides of places. This is a traveler in Rome. Uh, that, with, that came with this the library dust jacket on it. I love these things. I wish I had the whole set of them. Sooner or later, the uh, the brattle will provide. I will get all the ones that I want. Uh, but the Traveler in Rome was the one that I wanted the most. Uh, then we have this celebratory volume. This was also in really bad shape. I just saved it from the brattle. This is 50 years of Borzoi books. Uh, all of the, uh, the groundbreaking European choices that Blanche Knopf went out to Europe to get she, that she she pushed her husband she pushed her publishing house uh, to to explore the world of world literature rather than uh, hunt up only the people on the Upper West Side with with stunning results and this volume has a, it's a great tour through there uh, and a great snapshot of what the the beginning uh, uh, Borzoi books were like uh, okay then we have Jeremy Paxman this is uh, his book on royalty uh, I think I got this at the Brattle. Yes, yes, I did last uh, last year. So again, we're seeing a lot of books that are new. They're not new books, but they're new after they're new uh, additions to my library because this little book room changes. It doesn't change as much as the rest of Hyde Cottage, but it still changes. I, especially, I know when I find something and I want to add it to, to this room. That I know right away. And I knew that I did with this. I had a battered old UK 
mass market or paperback copy of this thing from, that I read and loved. I'm a big, big fan of the concept of royalty and also I have to admit, I'm, I don't know about a fan, a fan wouldn't be the right word, but I'm, I'm uh, pretty knowledgeable on the House of Windsor um, and therefore grieved at the idea that, that both the Queen and her heir are sick with COVID. Uh, and neither one is in a good bracket to recover, and that, that would be astonishing. That would be astonishing, almost unprecedented in, in English royal history. If the reigning monarch and the heir apparent were to die at the same time, that would make that would make William king, uh, and that would it, it would be amazing. Uh, that I don't know what's going to happen. I have a feeling that that COVID will see off Queen Elizabeth, which would be a terrible shame. It would it would be a terrible shame. The only way that I would be able to make myself feel in any way that there's a silver lining to that is that it would once again be Queen Elizabeth reflecting the, his, the history of her time period. She does, she's done that throughout her whole life. Uh, to, end on his, to, to go out on a historical pandemic uh, would be fitting. It'd be very sad, but it, it would be fitting. It would, it would be fit, you know, her birth. It would be fit her young girlhood during the war. It, it would be fit all of the, the peaks and valleys of her reign. Uh, we shall see. I, uh, I originally thought when I was reading the uh, palace updates that the queen was already dead. Uh, and that the palace was just lying about that. I, I don't know how much of that kind of lying happened in the case of Prince Philip, and I don't think you could do it with the Queen in the age of social media. So I'm pretty sure that it hasn't happened, but it easily could. I mean, people in her demographic don't recover from COVID anywhere near as much as people in any other demographic do. So she has the best medical care in the world. There's only so much that can do. Uh, we shall see. Uh, but I, I, I don't know where that morbid digression came from, but this book is terrific. This is, it's, it's, Paxman is really good. He's a really entertaining writer, but this is really, really good. Uh, okay, then we have this thing. Good Lord, is this another new addition uh, to this library? I think it is. Uh, yeah, this is another new, relatively new edition. This is the great University of Chicago edition of Democracy in America, de Tocqueville's classic Democracy in America. This is uh, translated, edited, and introduced by Harvey Mansfield and Delba Winthrop, and I believe I have a couple of different editions of this thing, and a bunch of other editions of Democracy in America. So I don't know how many of them are in this room, but I love this book, and I love this edition in particular. This, is, this edition really makes you feel like the editors are and the translators are sort of guiding you along. They are, they are not going to let you fall through the cracks of stuff that you might not understand. It's a wonderful scholarly edition of Democracy in America, the one that I recommend. Uh, oh, okay, all right, and then we'll finish up with something that we saw the other day. The other day we saw William Manchester's The Death of a President, and I mentioned that it was one of one of a handful of great so-called founding documents about the Kennedys, about John F. Kennedy's presidency. Uh, and here we have uh, the other two, <laughs> the other two founding documents that are great. Kennedy by Theodore Stor Sorensen, a uh, great big thing that was, that was uh, hailed when it came out by some critics as the autobiography that JFK never got to write. Uh, it's big and very meaty. It's very fascinating uh, to read. No matter what you might think of Sorison, certainly I have my problems with, with him and with a lot of his other writing. Uh, and also uh, Arthur Schlesinger's book, A Thousand Days. Uh, so there, A Thousand Days, Kennedy and Death of a President are three really big ones. You could add smaller peripheral stuff, uh, uh, ben Bradley, for instance, or Johnny We Hardly Knew You. You could add other things, but from the period, these three really stand out. And it, they also, uh, it also irritates me when people, you know, talk about these things as so-called court hist histories, that, that they're somehow all just paper mache, they're all fake. That bugs me. That, that bugs me a lot. I, I know as much about the Kennedy administration as it is possible to know, and I know when these authors are taking liberties. You wouldn't expect it quite so much of Manchester as you would from Sorensen and Schlesinger, both of whom were in Kennedy's orbit and knew him personally, but the point that they knew him personally is the thing that safeguards these books from a, the kind of dumb adulation that critics often lay at their feet. I, there, isn't, there isn't any of that in these books. There are flaws, but dumb reflexive adulation, the boss is always right. JFK himself had no patience with that kind of thinking, and they knew it. And I, but anyway, there. I should also point out, more importantly than that, believe it or not, I should point out, they're great reading. 
So, uh, if you want a, a big, huge undertaking on Kennedy, then get one of those three books. <laughs> Either or all three. Your library will have copies of all three. She's still staring at me. No, she's just sort of resigned in the sun. Uh, and that is it. That is this this uh, shelf. So we have one more shelf to do uh, in this bookcase, and then we then it's step ladder time again. Uh, but the next shelf is right on the floor, so we'll do we'll do that next. And I will I will take care of all of this ephemera. This, this ephemera has to be dealt with. Uh, but anyway, I'll wrap this up. Uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.